Hi all, I'm Mrs B and you've come to the Outlife YouTube channel once again. Today I'm going to show you a really, really cool task that's actually been dubbed the best art lesson ever by my grade three students. Now, my six-year-old Sadie came along with me and she had a go and she was able to do really well. But in a classroom situation, I'd suggest at least nine years old. So it looks a little bit like this. Now, I would expect that almost every single person's artwork within your class or at home would look different to mine because it's all about using your creative brain. So come with me and I'll show you how to create something like this. It is a little bit messy but in the best possible way. We use bubbles, we use straws, we use food dye to create three different types of handmade paper. And then we put them all together to create a collage. Okay, well, we're gonna play a game called Code Word. So in this video, later on at some point there is going to be a secret code word that i give you now if you remember that code word write it down in the comments straight away i will pick someone who has commented the correct code word and i'll give them a super awesome shout out in a future video so if you'd love to be shouted out <laughs> in a video that's coming up make sure that you find that code word write it down in the comments and i might pick you Now it's time for a shout out. Well done to those people that found the code word in some past videos. Huge shout out to the legend who is Miller Black, who found the code word in this episode. You're a legend, thanks for watching. As well as Gavin Zong, who also found a code word in this lesson. Thank you for watching and make sure you listen out for the code word in this video. What we'll do for this task? You'll need quite a few things for this task today, but they're mostly household items. So you'll need sort of a baking tray. You'll need a simple cup. What's this? A straw. A straw. These things? Food dye. Food dye. Whatever colours you have is completely fine. And you'll also need some dishwashing liquid. We'll be making three different types of paper today using some soap, a straw, some water, and some food dye. So let Sadie and I teach you how to do that today. Can I suggest that you also put some newspaper down? This newspaper actually has some familiar faces on it, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just because we don't want to get food dye all over your kitchen bench. The first type of paper we're going to make is bubble blowing. Okay, this is technique is called bubble blowing. So with bubble blowing, you need some different cups filled with water. You're gonna squeeze a little bit of soap in each of them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. How much? Yeah, that's enough. Enough for it to bubble up. Now a couple of drops of whatever color you choose in food dye. Oh, all right, oh, we've got pink in there and oh. yellow. It's a third yellow cup. All right, and then what's your third colour? Uh, oh. Peach. Peach. Now, when teaching this with a class, what I would actually do is set up different stations. So I would have a bubble blowing station. I would have all other stations based on um, the different types of paper that we're going to show you today. Uh, and then the kids will move around the room to do this. Obviously, if you're doing it at home, you can just do it one by one. So. Do you remember how to do bubble blowing, Sadie? Yeah. Okay, can you tell everyone? Um, you're going to get your straw and, and put the straw in the colour you blow. Blow, all right. We are not drinking this liquid. It has soap in it, so it won't kill you, but it won't taste nice. So please make sure when using the straw, we are not drinking it. We are blowing out like this. <sighs> Okay, you show everyone safe, blow it out. There we go. When that happens, you can see that the bubbles come up above the cup, and at which point you can make a print by placing the paper on top, and you can see the beautiful bubbles. Now, if it's really, really light, like ours is, 
just means you need a little bit more food dye. So we're going to fill this up with a little bit more food dye. Oh, now we don't want it to become a volcano. <laughs> you can see that's why I've put the tray down there so it doesn't destroy our kitchen. But when you print this time, it should show up. There we go. Uh -huh. Can I see it? Of course. So you can continue doing that, sweetie. So we're keeping on adding to the same piece of paper. Go. Good, that's enough there. Stop, take out the straw. And then Sadie's gonna print the yellow somewhere on the paper. Beautiful. That looks better, doesn't it? Good on you. Can I do this one? Yeah. So the aim is to try and get bubbles throughout the paper as well, not just in the same place over and over. So I'm gonna to aim to put it in the middle. Oh. Wow. Awesome. So repeat this process until the entire paper is filled with colourful bubbles. Oh. Uh, is it looking so far, guys? Oh, I think that's perfect. Now, when it comes to making an artwork out of this, what do you think this paper could be? What type of shapes do you see? Circle. So if we were to use this paper to turn it into an artwork, what do you think this could be? I can see little sheep. Could be lots of sheep. What else yeah. could it be? Clouds. Could be clouds. I can see some hills. We could turn it into hills. So yeah. this task is all about not just making the paper, but then using our imagination and our creative brain to see what we could turn this awesome paper into. But that's later. So had fun with that? Yes. We'll give Delilah a go and then we'll do something else. Yeah. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Oh. It's missing. It's missing. <laughs> and look. Flip the point. Oh. oh. I can put it here. I can do a lower. Okay. I love purple color. <laughs> I can do that. The next one is going to be. Ink blowing. So the next type of paper we're going to create is using a technique called ink blowing. You don't need anything else except for what you had before. We're going to reuse the ink that's in these cups. So what I'm going to do is put my straw in one of my chosen colours. Then I'm going to use the top of my finger to put on the top of my straw. That keeps the ink inside my straw here. And when I let it go onto my paper, I'm going to lift up my, my finger. You ready? <gasps> Oop, out comes the ink. So what I'm going to do now with this ink on my paper is I'm going to blow it, as you can see I've had a go already, throughout my paper with my straw. You can see it moves. And it makes it orange. Yeah, it moves it around the paper. So I'm actually moving my straw like that. You can repeat this process with all the different colors you have. But remember, if we blow too much, if we blow our oxygen out and don't get enough oxygen in our lungs, sometimes we can get a bit dizzy. So it's important to stop and take a few breaths if you're feeling yourself get a bit dizzy. So Sadie's going to have a go at that now. <laughs> so a trick <laughs> that still has soap in it, doesn't it? Well, a trick that I've learned, it's important to not blow on top. That's kind of what Sadie did. She came from above, get down low and you want to get it from the side. Can you see that? Yeah. All right, so get down a bit lower. Oh. Maybe even stand up or yeah, and get your straw on the side, not on the top. You've got to use, use your lungs, get in. There we go. This part, it's not going to work unless you really aim your straw to get the air to move the ink around. All righty, so have another go. Get closer. Good. Blow harder, that's it. Okay, say because they're not here. Get up closer, closer. <laughs> The third piece of paper we're going to make is painting with 
food dye. Now, I don't know if you knew this, but you can actually paint with food dye. So if you don't have any paints at home, painting with food dye is very similar to painting with watercolors. However, if you get it on clothes, it's a lot messier. So for this step, I'm just gonna get the kids to use the colors that we've been using to sort of paint the entire paper. piece of paper. Having a go at maybe blending colors. You can see how I've blended colors there. Make it as neat as possible. Just use those three colors really beautifully. Go girls. to dry. So in this lesson we've created three different types of paper. Firstly we've painted with food dye and tried to blend the colours really beautifully like this. Then we've had a go at some ink blowing which creates some really awesome splattery shapes. And we've also had a go at using soap in our cups to create bubble formations. Now that is not it today. We are going to do so much more with this. We are going to turn this paper into one of oh, We're going to turn these three pieces of paper, once they're dry, into one really awesome artwork. So for this portion of the task, you need your dried paper. We have our painting. We have our ink blowing and we have our bubble blowing. We also need a glue stick, some scissors and a pen to draw with. The first thing we need to do is take our ink blowing work. And this is actually a really tricky, tricky thing to do. I normally do this task with my grade three kids who are sort of nine year olds. But Sadie, how old are you? Six. So this this part might be a bit tricky for you, but I'm going to give you your ink blowing. What we're going to do with our pens and our creative brain is have a look at our ink blowing work. We can turn it upside down. We can turn it on the side. We're going to try and see what we can see or noticing is the special thing that we are doing today. We're going to, it's just like when you look up at clouds and you try to find shapes in the clouds, like little bunnies or a dinosaur or something like that. It's kind of like that. You're going to work out something that you can see inside your ink blowing. It could be, oh, I can see a bit of a jellyfish kind of shape. Or if you turn it this way, I can see a big palm tree in my one. What can you see, Sadie? Doesn't have to be the whole thing, it can just be a little part that you can see. A bird. That kind of looks like a bird. Cool. What else? What if you turn it this way? What do these look like? Uh, Trees. Or seaweed. Exactly. Once you've worked out what something looks like, you can add detail with your pen to make it appear that way to other people. So we want other people to know what it is that we've drawn. So for example, I will turn this shape here into a tree and I'm going to add details like leaves so that if someone else were to look at my artwork they would know what it is that I'm trying to draw. You can add details to your shape. Now this is such, I cannot express how amazing this type of task is for practicing creativity. This is pure creativity because you're noticing and you're looking and finding something that isn't necessarily there and you're turning it into something new. So I'm drawing my details so everyone else knows. Nice and neat, I've just got a biro here. Sadie's added little ears on her work there. She's turning hers into a bunny rabbit. This is quite a difficult task. So do your very best. And most of the time, these ink blowing will probably look like a tree or a jellyfish or a seaweed or something like that. So. If you can't find anything else, maybe just turn it into a tree. But I'm gonna use this bit here and he's gonna be a bit of a jellyfish.
Now, once you've added a few details, you can cut out your ink blowing objects. You don't have to use the whole thing, but I suggest two or three objects and I'm gonna cut around them carefully. This is a really, really difficult shape to cut. You can see there's lots of details to get around like this. There's my tree. Yeah, so these are my two objects. I've got a jellyfish and a tree. I might even use a little bit of this to create some seaweed. Cool. They're my three objects. I don't need the rest of this paper anymore. But say you can start cutting out her objects now. So whilst I'm just cutting out hers, the next thing you need to do is work out what type of landscape you need or what type of scene you need for the objects that you've found. So for example, I've got some seaweed and some jellyfish. So that would suggest sort of an under the sea kind of scheme. However, I've also got a tree, so I need some land in my artwork. But your artwork might be different. I've done lessons with my grade three kids where someone saw a pterodactyl and a volcano. And so they created sort of a prehistoric dinosaur scape with mountains and, and volcanoes and things like that. So their artwork looked different to mine. It completely depends on what you see or what you notice within your ink blowing piece of paper. That will determine the type of artwork you're creating today. So this is Sadie's tree, this is Sadie's little bunny. So what type of landscape are you going to do, Sadie? Where might you find a bunny in a tree? On hills. Yeah, true, I agree. So what you can do is you're going to use your bubbles to create some hills for your sky. So today we're going to use the painting that we did as the piece of paper we stick everything on. This is going to become our sky. Then we're going to cut out some hills for Sadie using our bubble paper. But for me, my bubble paper will become water. Have a look and see how we do it. This is my dough. Oh, can I please use it? Okay. Now I'm going to use Delilah's background and Delilah's bubble blowing paper. Now remember, your best, best cutting is necessary for a collage task like this. We want to do our very best to make our artwork really make sense. So collage is all about layering. So I first start with whatever's furthest away. So that means I'm starting with my sky, then I'm going to glue down my ocean. Stick that down onto my sky. And then I'm going to stick my land over the top. Now the bottom of my work's very messy down here, so what I'm going to do is turn it over and cut it so that it's a nice, neat piece of A4 paper again. Cool! So that is my sea and my land. Now what I can do is stick on my tree, find a spot for my jellyfish and my seaweed. Looking good, Sadie. Now it is a good idea with each of your layers to actually outline, to make each section sort of stand out, especially if you've used the same color for each of your pieces of paper, so that we can sort of see where one ends and the other one starts. Like that. Awesome, Sadie, you, you can now find a spot for these guys. Awesome, man, that looks cool. Wonderful. Now that everything's stuck down, it's worthwhile using some time with your little black pen here just to add some extra details to bring your artwork to the next level and kind of make it all make sense. What I mean by that is I might draw a sun in the sky, so everyone knows it's the sky. Might be a little bit difficult to sort of understand that. Maybe some extra waves. Maybe some little fishies under the sea. Maybe some flowers near my tree. Just so that when the viewer looks at my artwork, it all makes sense and it all works together. 
Delilah wants to show you her work. Ah, oh, beautiful three-year-old collage. <laughs> Good. Now, what I love about this task is that we prepared the paper in the same way, Sadie and I, but because of what we saw in our ink blowing was different, our artworks are completely different. And I could just sit here adding details all day long, or all night long. It's now night time, isn't it, Sadie? Yeah. <laughs> Today's code word is coral, just like my nail polish. What did I, you do? I made this picture. How did you do it? By making tape up. So it's as simple as that. Now, I did this over two lessons within my classroom, but at home, it probably took about an hour and a half. Just remember to set up your station to make sure that you don't make a big, big mess with the food dye. Now, I'd love to see your creations, so if you could tag me at artlife.melb on Instagram or at Artlife Art Lessons on Facebook, I would love to have a look at what you've been doing and possibly even share your creations. Make sure that you like, comment and subscribe below and ring that bell because I have heaps of art lessons to come in the future for you. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.